Since the time of Gregor Mendel, a lot of our understanding of genetics has developed. We now know a lot more about meiosis and the crossing over process, and we know about gene mapping and linkage. But the nice thing is that his model was so strong that a lot of the original principles actually are still very valuable when discussing genetics. And so first we'll talk about Mendel's law of independent assortment. And this says that genes are assorted independently of each other during meiosis. So if one gene ends up in one gamete, the other gene is just as likely to end up in that gamete as the other gamete as well. And so the way that this works is due to the way that homologous chromosomes line up on the metaphase plate during the first round of meiosis, meiosis one. And so what happens here is we've drawn the homologs with the blue and red representing the two homologous chromosomes of that pair. We've simplified it into just two pairs of chromosomes so that the illustration is more straightforward. But what goes on during meiosis one is that they will replicate. And so now we have these two sister chromatids there and they're still connected with each other. But as they align at the metaphase plate, notice that the, so we'll have um, the red and blue be sort of representing distinct versions of these, these sisters or of these homologs. Notice that they can line up so that the blue ones are both on one side and those will end up in the same daughter cell. Or just as likely, we are going to see the blue and red line up here and so you'll get one copy of the blue and one copy of the red over here. And what that means is that there's no greater likelihood that some blue gene over here will be acquired with the blue gene over here as it is that this blue gene would be acquired with one of the red genes over here. And so that is what independent assortment means. That means that the gene for hair color and the gene for eye color and the gene for a widow's peak and other genetic features are no more likely to be inherited with each other as they are to be inherited separately. And so in the formation of gametes, there is independent assortment of alleles and alleles can end up in the same daughter gamete or they can end up in separate gametes with just as equal frequency. Now, one thing that you might pose with an example like this is that what if they're on the same chromosome? Aren't they likely to, if there's a gene down here and a gene up there, aren't those likely to be inherited together? And it turns out that before Mendel knew about crossing over or the synapsis, he already had factored this in because remember that crossing over can occur during this process. So maybe something from the red gene will cross over or the red chromosome and the blue chromosome over here will cross over. And so this adds a degree so that even if there were two things that were on the same original chromosome, there's a chance that they'll cross over and now this one and this one will assort separately as well. And so the law of independent assortment is something that was developed before we knew a lot about the meiosis process. But what, we'll, what we see is that because of the differential alignment on this metaphase plate and the crossing over, you're no more likely to inherit two of the same two genes together as you are to have those two alleles be separated and inherited in different gametes. And so since the time of Mendel, we've added an understanding of crossing over, of genetic linkage, of gene mapping and things like that that we'll discuss. But before we get to that, it's really important to realize that there is no real rhyme or reason to how different alleles are inherited and how they're passed down during the meiosis process to the four separate gametes that will be formed. So there's a lot of independence and the only exception to that is genetic linkage, which we'll now be discussing.